Welcome everyone to the sixth uh, Connect uh, community call. Today we're going to go over some tech highlights, the link functionality, as well as welcome you all to an open discussion about the experience of being a Connect uh, community manager. Um, so with this, I would like to pass the floor on now to Alessia to give us her uh, presentation and start us off with a call. Uh, before that, sorry, we also have uh, the running notes document. So feel free to, during the presentation, add your comments or questions there or uh, save them for the discussion at the end of the call. So uh, now the floor is yours, Alessia. Thank you all. Thank you, Athena. So let me share my screen. Sorry, this was unexpected. Okay. Uh, so uh, Athena already talked about the agenda, so let's go directly to the to the topic. So some technical news since um, since December. So first of all, you can always stay up to date of what's happening from the technical point of view of Open Air Connect, uh, going to our uh, brand new roadmap on Trello. And clearly you will see all the change of also in the Open Air catalog of the Open Air Connect service. So since December, uh, which was uh, when we had the, the previous community call for Open Air Connect, we included two new filters for selecting the research products for your gateway. So the publisher field and the publication year. Clearly, you can apply different operators. So for example, you can uh, use classical uh, operators for string for the publisher while for the publication year, you can select a specific year or lesser than, greater than, so that you can basically use the filter to select a subset of research products that have been published in that specific year or in a specific uh, date range. And you can use these filters uh, to um, filter the research products from a specific data source in your configuration, but you can also apply these filters to the whole open air graph. So for example, if your research initiative or research infrastructure uh, used to set uh, its name among the publishers, sometimes this is the case, you can exploit that uh, to include those products uh, in your gateway. The other uh, the other news uh, is related to the user interface uh, of, of your gateway, because now you can easily see from the list of from the list of search results and from the landing page of a publication, uh, which is the open access route that has been followed. So whether it's published in a repository, so it's green, or if it's in a journal and in, in in that case, if it's a gold open access publication or if it's uh, in a hybrid journal. Finally, uh, and this is very useful for uh, university alliances that are using Open Air Connect, is that we have integrated the projects from the Erasmus Plus pro uh, program of the European Commission. So this means that you can now add uh, Erasmus Plus projects in your configuration so that all the outputs that have been funded thanks uh, to that project are included in, uh, in your gateway. So uh, this is a recommendation I would like to make for all the university alliances uh, to select their projects in their configuration. Uh, so what to expect in the next months? Uh, we expect a lot of changes, a lot of improvement, especially you will have more power to configure your homepage and uh, you will be able um, to, to link and to add uh, materials also about open science 
guides and specific best practices for your community. And as you can see here, we have uh, many other technical uh, technical news that uh, we will expect in the coming months. So it will be a very uh, a very good spring for our developers. Uh, and today I would like to focus a little bit on the integration of statistics about open science aspects in your gateway. So many of you uh, know that Open Air offers two services for research initiatives. We have Open Air Connect, but we also have Monitor, through which you can monitor the open science uptake, the open science trends within the, uh, within the community. Now, we would like to include some of these uh, statistics also in the gateway in order for communities that do not have a monitor dashboard uh, to have an idea of what's going on from uh, with, re with this respect. So um, we plan to include statistics about different, different aspects. So open access, collaborations, uh, the fairness, and uh, usage statistics. So um, I can say the, uh, the impact and uh, the, uh, the accessibility of the resources that are available in the gateway, so the resources of your community. And clearly there is plenty of things that we can offer. So I would like to ask for your help, for your input in order to select the indicators that are most useful uh, for you. So I will go, uh, I will show you the indicators and then uh, we will ask for your, for your input on this. Uh, so some indicators that are available to understand the open, the, the maturity, the open access publishing, uh, are for example, well, of course, the percentage of open access publications but also their distribution over the years and based also on the open access route. So green, gold, hybrid, or bronze, depending on the, on the venue that has been used to publish the, the publication. Um, we can also have a chart with publications over time by access right. So it's, it's similar to the one about open access route, but in the open access route, you only count the open access publications. Well, here we also see how open access possibly increase with respect to closed access or embargo. The same we can do for data sets. And uh, we can also go into the details of the, of the venue and the business model of the venue, so the journal. So whether uh, we have many publications published as full open access, so in a gold, uh, in a gold journal with article processing charges, but also in a diamond journal, so a gold open access journals without article processing charges, and clearly also a transformative journal. Indicators on collaborations. So we can see collaborations in different ways. So the, the aspects that we think are useful to understand how your community collaborate with others uh, is to analyze which are the projects. So the, the, the project grants where your community participates into, uh, but also collaborations based on uh, affiliations of the co-authors of your publication, so to understand which are the uh, organizations that work together to achieve research result, and clearly we oh sorry, we can see it as the as the list of organizations, but we can also plot it in a map in order to see the collaborations with the different countries, and in order to understand how. Um, multidisciplinary uh, is your community, we can analyze uh, the publications also by fields of science. 
then we, we can show some indicators about the fairness. So fairness means uh, the um, findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability of uh, research products. So what we look is, to, we look into some indicators of fairness, which means if the publications or the data sets have a persistent identifier, if they comes with a license, and um, where they are um, available. So the top 15 data sources. Finally, the user statistics. And these statistics come from uh, the open air service usage counts. And basically it counts the, the views and downloads of our research products, not only in the open air portal, but also on the, on the repository that hosts uh, the product itself. And here we can show the total downloads uh, over time. And we can consider the year of the publication of the publication, uh, but also we can consider the year of the download. So when the user actually downloaded a specific publication. And uh, in a similar way, we can also count for the average. So I think we can start the poll, I think now. So there are there will be a few questions that I kindly ask you to, to fill. Okay, perfect. So the first questions, let me go back to my presentation. Okay, so the first question is about the categories of indicators. So which is the category that you think uh, is most useful uh, to give an overview of the open science maturity, the open science trend of your community? And you can select uh, at most two options about those that you can see here and in the pool. So in my in my poll Latina, I I see still zero. Oh, okay, so yes, they are coming. Now we're Perfect. starting, yes. Okay. See, you already started to answer. So in the in the next question instead, I I would like to ask you which is the indicators for each category that you think uh, is most useful for your community. So this will give us uh, an idea on how to group the indicators and uh, which will be uh, those that make more sense uh, to you. So here, these are the open access uh, indicators. Let me show you again the indicators about collaborations. Clearly, if you want, you can also suggest other indicators that for any reason didn't come to my mind because we, we have possibility also to include other things. We can go again to the fairness. So for example, one aspect that I didn't propose in this slide is the fact that we can also count for the publications that have an abstract. So this would give um, an idea of the metadata richness of, uh, of the publications of your community, for example. And finally, the usage statistics. Again, the total number of downloads or the average number of downloads uh, of the publications. And these numbers come from the open air usage count service. 
uh, which includes statistics from many repositories that are integrated uh, in OpenR. So, uh, Athena, what do you think? We collected the answers. I think more or less. Uh, last call for anyone that uh, would like to also uh, join in. I see most of you are here. So, in the poll, I mean. So, I think we should be ready to close it, Alessia, if you agree. And Again, if you if you want to contribute something else, you can use the the chat or the um, the collaborative notes documents, and we can move this forward. Okay, thank so. you, Atina. So, shall we share the results? Oh, yes, I think I can. Do you see the? Um... the poll in my screen? No, I think everyone should be able to um, to see because I've shared it with uh, with everyone. I think so. Can someone okay, confirm? So the, so yeah. they, okay, perfect. So they can see the results. Exactly. Uh, so some very brief comment on these results. So the, the most selected categories is the one about uh, open access indicators followed by the fairness indicators. I have to say this is not a surprise to me. So thank you for confirming these two important pillars of, of open science, which is many things. Regarding the open access, uh, I see the percentage of open access publications and data sets, more than 60% each. Okay, so simplest indicators are always <laughs> very useful and uh, collaborations so okay we have all of you like the heat map for publications by country thanks a lot followed by the publications by fields of science for the multidisciplinarity and the uh, and the projects okay good good to know while for the fairness, we have uh, data sets with the persistent identifiers, which clearly is, is the most selected over 80%. And okay, the, there is a lot of interest also for the usage statistics. That's, that's great. Okay, this is really important information for us to, to plan uh, the next step of the service. So thank you very much for this. Uh, before uh, we move to the next part of the of this call, uh, do you have any questions? Or comments? Because I see, for example, some of you uh, in the poll indicated uh, that uh, they would like to see other categories of indicators. So it would be nice to know if you had specific uh, ideas of, about that. Feel free to talk. As you can see, we are we are a small group. <laughs> but if you prefer to write, you can write it on the chat or in the meeting documents, and this will help us a lot. Okay. So Athena, do you confirm that there there is nothing in the chat yet? Not perfect. that I can see Alessia, so maybe we can proceed and then... Okay, perfect. So we go to the link functionality. 
So the link functionality is one of the functionality you have in your OpenAir Gateway and can be used by you as a community manager, but also uh, by the users of the gateway. And this functionality is very useful to, uh, to grow the content of your community, and you can use it in different ways because you can use it to link uh, research products to your community, if they are missing, to project grants, to indicate that a research product has been funded by a specific project grant, or you can also link uh, research products uh, with each other. So to say um, that a publication is supplemented by a data set or a data set uh, is related to this software, so has been uh, analyzed uh, with this software, for example. Um, and you can you and you can do that also in bulk mode. So if you have uh, a lot of POIs that you know that are, li are linked to the same projects or you must link to your community, you can do this uh, with the link functionality. So in the slides I will share, uh, you will see that I described the process, uh, but I would like to show you the process in real time. So uh, for this demo of the link functionality, I selected the gateway on heritage science, but you can clearly uh, use your gateway to try the functionality and uh, because it's available on all the, on all the gateways. So uh, the first option you have to use the link functionality is to start from a research product. So for example, you can um, do a search in your gateway. In this case, I will search for a publication I co-authored with Laura Benassi. It should be here, here it is, yes. So this is my... Uh, my publication, and I see that has been funded by the EC uh, project Iperion HS. Uh, but we lack the, the funding uh, from Open Air Nexus, for example. So, what I can do is to click on link to, and clearly, I have to log in. This is always the first step when you want to do anything on a gateway. Okay. So now here you can decide what is the target of your link. So if you want to link it to another research product, to a project or to other research communities. So in this case, I will show you the link to a project. So I can search for Open Air Nexus. I add the project to my basket on the right, and I move on. So now I have to confirm that this is a correct link. So this is my publication on the left, and on the right is the project. So I can confirm. So now the system is processing uh, my, my action and we'll add uh, the link into the my claim link, which is exactly this page that you can reach also from your initials here on the top right under my links. And if you made a mistake, you don't have to worry because you can always go to this page and delete it. And the second way you can use the, the link functionality is from the menu. So you can go at the top and click on Start Link. Here you can do search. So for example, uh, Venus, whatever. And the system will perform different searches. So it, it will search for research products available in OpenAir, in Crossref, 
on data site and on ORCID. So here, if you put an ORCID ID, you will have uh, records also in ORCID. So here I select again my publication, but in this case, as you can see, you can select more of them. So for example, you can select three and then you can go to the next step. And here again, you can do the linking to different types of entities, um, but uh, let's say we still want the link to the Open Air Nexus project. And here you have the, the, the overview of the information that you are asked to confirm. And we have a warning. So the warning is telling me that I'm trying to link um, a research product, a publication in this case, that has been published before the beginning of the project. This sometimes is correct because it may happen, but typically it's not. So you should check, let's say, the, the warning and uh, in case you have to delete the publication that is wrong. And you can confirm linking. Here again, the process is the same. So uh, the links between the research products, uh, in this case, I selected two publications, but really it can be the, a data set, software, or any kinds of research products. And again, if it's wrong, please delete it, <laughs> because otherwise we introduce wrong information in the gate. Oops. So the, the last uh, modality is the bulk mode. So here, instead of searching for research products in one of the sources, you can upload a CSV file where, with a list of DOIs. So if you click here, I take this one. Here, what is happening is that the system is asking for the metadata uh, from Crossref and data site. So in some cases, uh, it's not it's not fine, and you have a warning. In this case, it's because the first line contained the list, the, the name DOI. But there are other cases in which uh, the system may, may fail. Uh, so you will have a report of this. Um, and in the basket, you have now all the metadata of the publications whose DOI, whose DOIs were in, in your CSV. And you can go to the next step. So use case. Uh, those publications are relevant from a community, but for some reason, they cannot be picked up automatically uh, by, by the system, by OpenAir. So you can create the CSV file with the DOI. You use the link functionality and you say that all these publications should be linked to my community. So in this case, uh, when you select the research community, the current community is automatically selected. And here you can see that I can choose among many, many community because I have, let's say the superpower, because I have visibility and I am a manager of all the communities. In your case, you will only see the communities for which you are a manager, which is typically only yours. So again, we have a step to check and confirm that these are correct. So for example, you can say, well, no, I know that this is not a publication, this is a data set. And you can decide if you want to change this information for all the entities or only for that specific one. And once you review everything, you can proceed uh, to the final step, which will be basically what I already showed you before. As a manager, if you go to the administration dashboard, users, links, you can see all the links that the users of the gateway performed. And in the case that if you see that something is wrong, you can delete it. 
Uh, if you see that um, there is, um, let's say, um, a bad user who's adding a lot of links to your community, please report that to us because we can basically blacklist the user uh, in order to avoid these false links uh, to be created. Um, and if you want to avoid that in the future, you can play with the configuration of the community. So if you go to the community info profile, you have the possibility to say that um, only managers can create links to your community or only members. So only users that are subscribed to the community. And uh, you can also limit uh, who can subscribe. So in this case, for example, anyone can join. But if you want to, to limit, let's say, the number of person who can join and therefore can claim, can use the link functionality, then you can set the configuration to be uh, only by invitation. So you as a manager will invite the members and you can say that the members can claim so that uh, not any logged in user of the gateway will be able to link products to your community. Okay. Let me go back to my presentation. So here you will find uh, all the, the information I already shown. So let me stop sharing. Because I would like now to, to take your questions and to start the open discussion. And I'm really happy to hear about your comments, ideas and complaints also, if there are any. Alessia, there are some comments in the chat. I don't know if oh, you can see perfect. it. Yes, let me open it. Yes, we got a question with Francoise. So we are both in the call uh, and in the same room, although with two laptops. <laughs> uh, but uh, we do have a question regarding the deletion of, of some links, um, mm -hmm. because I think we are both managers of the, so it's the Daria gateway we are working on. And um, we try to delete some, some links, but uh, we got an error. Ah, oh, yes. Both of us. So... And I think we need to report something because it seems that also user like suggested a lot of links and it might be the case you just described earlier. So we will have a look and probably come back to you uh, soon. Yes, yes, please do. And okay, I will take a note about these uh, IDs that you added there because I probably can use it to go back to the to the problem. Separately. Thank you, Laura and uh, Francoise, for this. And I see other comments from Maurice. Ah, Maurice, you were the one suggesting uh, an additional indicators. So like the links between data and publications. Thank you. Thank you for these suggestions. And okay, and you also have questions about the link functionality. So is the link made immediately visible in the open air graph or does it have to wait for an update in the cycle? Okay, uh, it depends. It depends because uh, if you link um, a product that is already in open air, then you have to wait for the open air graph update in order for the link to appear. Uh, but if you link something that is available on Crossref, on Dataset, on Orchid, then everything is added in a few minutes. 
to the open air graph and to your gateway. And this is because uh, we do not know if the if that specific pro product that you have selected from the external sources is already in open air. So what we do is that we fetch the metadata from the external source and we add it to the graph. This means that for um, as, for a period of time, uh, you may introduce duplicates. Uh, duplicates that will have that will have to be processed by open air. So the next time we update the graph, you will have the link and you will not have the duplicate. And the other question is, uh, it says link status pending. Is there another action required to validate or accept the links? By whom? Okay, no. The link is pending because in the example I show, I selected uh, products that are already in open air. So the pending status is really, uh, the pending status is, is, is really the status that tells you that this link is not yet available and will be available in the next update of the open air graph. And I don't think there are uh, do managers need to validate a link. <clears throat> uh, the current uh, the current approach we have uh, is that uh, all links we consider valid by default, and then the manager can uh, remove them if wrong, <laughs> because we. At the very beginning of the service, we were discussing this functionality with the uh, with the first communities. I mean, I'm talking about it was 2018 uh, in Open Air Connect, and they found it very uh, difficult for them to validate each and every link suggested by the users. So those communities suggested to invert the process and say. I trust my researchers. I trust the researchers of my community. So by default, the link is, is to be accepted. And then um, the managers can anyway remove it. And, and I think that this approach in combination with the new possibility to limit who can add links to the community is a, is a good approach to avoid a burden uh, on community managers because otherwise in, in order to see the new products the, the new links to the projects uh, you would need to go through all the suggestions uh, every time and i know that you are very busy with other uh, with other activities so yes you need to be very careful who is able to make claim indeed. Micro workers from India had on my gateway. Yes, I know that this is a problem and this is why we introduced the, the different options that I show you at the end. So the possibility to have only managers who can claim. And this is very useful, probably most useful for uh, research infrastructures. Uh, but also the possibility to, you know, to, to set the gateway as um, uh, with members by invitation, and then all the members can claim. Because in that case, you really, you really know who can make the links uh, in your gateway.
So any other curiosity you would like to, to know? Alessia, there is uh, here another question from Maurice uh, that is asking if uh, you can show um, how to manage the users. Oh, yes, I can show it again. Mm -hmm. Let me share my screen. Okay. So in the community, in the community info profile, and at the bottom, you can see that um, you can decide who can join if anyone can join as a member of the community. So if anyone can do it or only by invitation. And here you can decide who can create links. So if any logged in users, only the members or only the managers. Then if you decide that only um, people can join by invitation, then you can go to the users section, members, and here you can invite the persons. So you can add uh, an email and this message will be sent uh, to the person with a link to accept uh, to become a member of the, of the gateway. In order for the I mean, you, you can send the same message to different people. So if you want to do that, you can separate the emails uh, with commas. So uh, .b jcom and whatever you want. So you can invite, let's say, different persons in, in one shot. And oh, under the notification settings, you can decide how you want to be notified about uh, new managers, new members, and uh, and for the information about new links for your community. So you can decide if you want to be notified every day, if there is anything to notify clearly, every couple of days or every week. Or of course, you can disable everything and if you don't want to be notified. See? So Janneke has a comment on the chat. Maybe it would be better to set the default to invitation only and only managers as default as well. Uh, yes, probably this is a good idea. We, we decided to maintain mm -hmm. uh, the old values, but in fact, I think uh, it makes sense to, to use such defaults and inform all the community managers about the, mm -hmm. about the change. Mm -hmm. Thanks, uh, thanks Yannick, for the suggestion. Uh, can it be that a linked product disappears from our gateway? It is marked as available in our links, but not listed. Uh, Laura, do, do you mind sharing your screen? Because I don't think I understand what you mean. Okay, so no problem. I'll try to show you. So we've tried to add it again. Okay, so it's a software, so let me see. So here I go to manage, right? To users, links. And now we are trying to add it again, so it's still pending, but we have another uh, version of it. Or I don't know if it's called a version, but... Here, we have mm -hmm. this uh, product, so it's a software that is marked as available. 
Um, but then when I go on the home page of our gateway and I look in the research software that we have linked there and I click on view all, we don't find it anymore. And mm -hmm. I think it's kind of recent because I remember seeing it. <laughs> so that's why I think it disappeared. I mean, it's probably not the right word, but uh, so mm -hmm. here I cannot see it anymore. And if you go back to the to the list of links and you click it, what happens? Uh, I think I did it here. So here what happened? There is no summary information ah, available. There is something weird here, yes. Because there is the title. And if you go on the right, there is nothing, right? If I go on the right. So there is no more right. It's okay. Oh, I see. Can you share this link uh, yeah, sure. on the chat? Because I will ask the developer to, to check. Sure. I don't Thanks. know if it's a problem mm -hmm. of uh, metadata available mm -hmm. that for some reason prevent uh, its proper listing in mm -hmm, the search. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Athena, do we have any comments in the meeting notes? Uh, maybe. Let me quickly double check. Um, if I'm not mistaken, they were all addressed. Yeah, it looks like it. Any other comments, questions? I think there is something coming on the chat from Maurice. Yes, there it is. Maurice asks, how can I bulk remove links? Yeah. Yes, unfortunately you cannot. So if you have a specific requirement, for example, because you see that there, there is the Indian guy, uh, inform me with the with the email that you can see from, from that page, and we will remove uh, everything in bulk and blacklist the user. But yes, I would consider that a, a feature request to be able to uh, search among the claims, uh, among the links, as you can already do, and uh, select uh, all of them. This makes sense, yes. Um, excuse me. Um... Yes, uh, uh, thank you very much for, for the, the presentation. Uh, Alessia, I wanted to, to know a bit more about advanced criteria because uh, uh, I wasn't uh, be able to, to understand uh, very well the, this uh, functionality. And uh, I guess that can, could help maybe to refine some results. Is it possible you, you, you tell us a bit more about this functionality, please? Yes, sure. So this is a, a new functionality that we added in, in December. So basically the idea is that um, with the advanced criteria, you can um, apply criteria on different metadata fields on all the research products on the open air graph. 
So let me let me share so I will show it. So I think I will go to another gateway to, to show you uh, the one in North American studies. Okay, so for example, in this case, uh, the criteria are on a combination. So they combined values that must match the subject with values that must, must match uh, with the fields of science. So they want everything that has North America in the subject and fields of science uh, that starts with 0, 05 or 0, 06, which means um, social science and humanities, basically. And uh, a similar case, these other criteria that say everything that has Mexico, United States, and Canada in the subject, uh, in the social science and humanities fields of science. And you can do this to add different criteria and you can use different methods of fields. So you can use, for example, the ORCID ideas to say that everything uh, authored by this person must be included in the gateway. Or you can use the description and say every time everything that has the term North America in the description is to be included in my gateway. And you can use that in combination. So you can have everything that has North America in the description and uh, I don't know. And the publisher is. Uh, Plus, for example. So these are the kind of things that you can do. And basically these are the same filter you can apply to the data sources, but they are, instead of being applied only on the subset from that specific data sources, you apply it to the whole open air graph. So I hope this was a little bit uh, clearer uh, Francois. Yes, thank you, Alice. I think we will play with this, with this criteria, with this uh, functionality, and uh, make some tests to see if uh, bring us some um, more refined results. Thanks. If you want to have a sort of preview of what. Uh, a query like this can bring, you can use the explore portal. So explore.openair.eu. And if you use the advanced search functionality, you will basically see the more or less the same list of fields. So you can use that form to test your query and, uh, and see what uh, it will bring to your gateway. So I see another questions on the chat. Uh, how can I add projects that I cannot find in open air? Should I add them via linking? Uh, no, unfortunately, this is not something uh, that you can do. Uh, so you cannot add projects. Uh, if you think that open air lacks projects from a very important funder for for your community, uh, then let us know because we can, uh, together with Harry, uh, also present in this community call, together with him, we can get in touch with the funder and establish an, uh, a collaboration with them so that we can import the description of their project and so that they will be available for you as a community manager, uh, but also available for uh, via the open air portal and via Zenodo. So if this is the case, uh, let us know. Uh, if instead we are missing one specific project uh, from, from a funder that we already have, 
um, then please uh, let us know because it could be a technical issue that needs to be addressed. Or maybe it's just the fact that the funder is not providing to us um, updated information. For some funders, we have, for example, projects uh, until 2021. And if your project is new, we don't have it yet in our in our system. So Um, Maurice. Maurice missed the audio at the start of the presentation, but what are the ideas for customizing the start page? Can we also easily add the SDGs and FOS widgets and pages? Uh, yes, did. That was the exactly the, the idea. So you will have the possibility to select different, uh, different sections from your home page. So one is for the SDGs, one for the FOS, uh, one is for the guides on how to use the gateway. Uh, another one is about uh, open science uh, documentations, guides, webinars. So, and we, and we would like uh, to work with each community in order to customize, uh, especially the the section that will be about the training on open science because open air can provide some training on generic aspects of open science. While you as a community may have material, webinars, uh, guides for open science practices in your specific research community. So I think it's very important to liaise from that point of view in order to provide uh, the best uh, training material as possible for for the researchers in, in your community. Thank you, Eisling, for coming. And I think we reached the end of, of this community call. So I would like you to thank you for being here, for the questions, the suggestions that you that you had. And the next community call will be in July, the second. And we will target mainly the research infrastructures and research initiatives. Uh, together with Harry, we will show the uh, the monitor for the uh, research infrastructures. So if you haven't done it so, you can register. I think Athena already shared the link for the registration to the next community calls. Yes, and so, I will also reshare it again following up to this call. So make, make sure to register and join us. Okay. So have a nice day. Thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and see you at the next one. Goodbye. Bye-bye.